Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ksenia and I make videos for people who like myself are going through the family immigration process. I'm not an immigration attorney. My videos are based on publicly available information, my own experience and the experience of my subscribers. And the purpose of my channel is to give you guys the confidence to go through this process completely on your own. Today's video is a quick one and we are going to talk about the non-immigrant visa extensions as it relates to the form I-539. This typically relates to those of you who are in the United States on B1, B2 visitor visa and you are approaching the end of your six month period on the I-94. It is obviously best to remain in status while you are in the US because being in an unlawful status can come with a lot of repercussions down the line and can cause you a lot of trouble in future visa applications. So technically, if your I-94 is about to expire, you have two options. One is to leave the United States and the second option is to extend your non-immigrant status. However, what a lot of applicants don't realize before they submit this kind of application is how long it actually takes to process it. In some cases, it can take anywhere between three to six months to 10 months or even two years, especially if this is not the first time you are filing for a non-immigrant visa extension. Based on the experiences that others have shared with me, if this is not your first extension, a lot of people will not even receive a confirmation or even a receipt of this application and even worse, a denial. Speaking of the I-539 denials, this is where you have to be extremely careful as to not accrue unlawful presence in the US. If you file your I-539 application while still in status, as indicated on your I-94, you may remain in the United States while that extension of status application is pending. You may submit for an extension of status in a timely manner, meaning at least 45 days before your current I-94 expires, you will be under something known as a period of authorized stay, which technically means that you are still overstaying your current non-immigrant visa. However, you do not accrue unlawful presence. However, considering the current processing times of this form, by the time you receive a possible approval of the extension of your non-immigrant status, it will be retroactively counted from the expiration date of your original I-94. In other words, if you request your status to be extended for six months, but the approval takes 10 months, for example, by the time you receive the approval of the form I-539, you would have already accrued at least four months of visa overstay. I will give you an example to better understand the complications that extending your status can cause for you in the future. Jane Doe arrived in the US on November 10th, 2022, and her original I-94 expired on May 9th, 2023. Before May 9th, she applied for a six month extension that took 12 months to process, and she finally received a decision only in May 2024 and the approval notice stated that her new extension was valid between May 10th 2023 and November 9th 2023. So Jane Doe accrued at least six months of visa overstay. This is going to be a big issue for Jane when she leaves the United States. Although technically she did not accrue unlawful presence in the US while her I-539 was still pending, she still violated the terms of her non-immigrant status by overstaying. And this makes her current visa in the passport automatically void. So in the future, Jane, if she ever wants to return back to the United States, she is going to have to reapply for a new visa. But considering the violation of her prior non-immigrant status, immigration may choose to deny any potential future visa applications unless Jane can provide a lot of documentation to plead her case. But this may be very difficult for her to do on her own in the future and she might need help of an attorney. What you also 
also need to consider is that the vast majority of the extension of stay applications are denied. And if your I-539 is denied, you begin to accrue unlawful presence from the date of your denial. If, however, USCIS determines that your I-539 application was not filed in a timely manner or you misrepresented certain facts in your application, in that case, your unlawful presence begins to count from the expiration date of your original I-94. This is why it is an extremely risky move to submit for an extension because you cannot guarantee that it will be approved. On my channel, we primarily focus on family-based immigration, and you may be wondering how would that affect your relative who came to visit you on a visitor visa. Obviously, this is not legal advice in any case. However, definitely consider everything we just talked about in this video. I also highly recommend that you check out a video that I made in regards to petitioning your parents and some of the things you need to seriously think about before you petition your parents. And I will also link that video here. You may, of course, know that unlawful presence is forgiven for immediate relatives of U.S. citizens if they adjust status in the United States, meaning if they apply for a green card while still in the United States. Of course, that is if they are eligible to adjust status based on other factors, such as legal entry and no violations of the law. It is a common misconception that if you are an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, your unlawful presence will be automatically forgiven for you, regardless where you apply for a green card. This is not true. The immediate relatives of U.S. citizens are forgiven for unlawful presence in the United States only if they continue to remain in the United States and apply for adjustment of status. Your status as an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen doesn't protect you from triggering an entry ban once you leave the United States. The good thing is that even if your I-539 is still pending and you have to leave the United States, that is still okay. And any time while your I-539 was still pending, even if you never received an approval, will still protect any time that you were in the United States waiting for it to be processed and that time will not be considered for the purposes of unlawful presence. So I hope that you found this video useful. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you guys in my next videos. Bye!